My name is Gordon, and I'm a functional consultant on the Dynamics 365 Business Central team at Encore Business Solutions. In this video, I'd like to show you how to create an item in Dynamics 365 Business Central. Before buying and selling items, we need to ensure that the information for the items are accurate because when you create documents such as orders or invoices containing these items, that information will automatically populate from the item card to our lines. First, we can navigate to the items page by searching for items. This brings up a list of our items where we have information such as the item number, description, type, the price and cost, as well as drillable fields such as inventory, which brings us to the item's ledger entries. Back to our list, we can select new on the action bar to create a new item. Here, we have some templates that will pre-populate the card. Templates for items or service items. I'll just select item. On our card. First, we can give it a number and a description. Next, we can select its type. For item types, we have inventory for items that we keep track of, service for items such as labor costs, and non-inventory if you don't keep track of this item's inventory. We also have the base unit of measure which is the unit of measure which you'll be purchasing the item at. We also have item category code, and by selecting one of these item categories, it adjusts our item attributes in the informational pane on the right side. For our next category, we have inventory. Here, we can dictate a shelf number, as well as drill into our item ledger entries again. In our next section, we have costs and posting. Our posting details dictate the GL accounts, which are connected to these items. For our cost details, we can dictate the unit cost for purchasing the item. It's important to note that even if you put $100 here, we must press show more to find this hidden last direct cost field. Since it's set at $0, when this item is brought into a transaction, it actually pulls from this last direct cost field. So we must adjust this to $100 as well. Our next section, is the prices and sales. Here, we can dictate our unit price or how much we sell the item for. By putting a price of $200, it automatically populates our profit percentage field, which is calculated with this method, price minus cost. We also have our sales unit of measure so our unit of measure for selling this item. For more advanced features, we may need to fill our replenishment field, which is how we are replenishing this inventory. So whether we purchase the item or assemble it in a production order. This works together with our next section, the planning section. Here, we select our reordering policy. For example, we can select the fixed reorder quantity. From here, we can select our reorder point. For example, if I put 10, once our inventory hits 10, the system will suggest a message that we reorder, if I put 50, it will suggest that we reorder 50 pieces of this item. Our last two sections 
our item tracking and warehouse. For item tracking, we can attach item tracking codes and serial numbers. For our warehouse section, this dictates where this item is stored, which warehouse, how we pick and put it away. This concludes how to create an item card in Dynamics 365 Business Central. Please contact us if you have any questions.